didn't know what that meant when I was growing up. But I certainly know what it means now. I'm glad I got them. Mother folk ought to be glad you got them. You know, some of us would have went off on some people, but I got Jesus. <laughs> Yep. But I got Jesus. Some of y'all would have cussed them flat. All the way. Hey, this morning we, we looked at Psalm 64. Let's go back there. Let's go back there. There were some people who um, they forgot church started at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Still church, you know? No, not me. <laughs> but you know, they purposefully late, you know. I love that. Oh, no, no, no. So, Lord, don't show up and they're not on time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where did everybody end? <laughs> Baby, you ain't got missed. <laughs> Psalm 64. Psalm 64. I want to read it again in its entirety. Psalm 64. Hear me. My God, as I force my complaint, protect my life from the threat of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the plots of the evildoers. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim cruel words like deadly arrows. They shoot from ambush at the innocent. They shoot suddenly without fear. They encourage each other in evil plans. They talk about hiding their snares. They say, who will see us? They plot injustice, and they say, we have devised a perfect plan. Surely the human mind and heart are cunning. But God will shoot them with his arrows, and they will suddenly be struck down. He will turn their own tongues against them and bring them to ruin. All those who will see them will shake their heads in scorn. All people will fear they will proclaim the works of God and ponder what he has done. The righteous will rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. And the upright in the heart will glory in him. So far the text this morning. Father, we thank you for uh, your presence that we feel in this place. Thank you for being with us today. We thank you, O oh God, for meeting needs and for turning things around. But God, here it is, preaching time, and I need your presence and your power. Lord. Would you consecrate my lips and make them holy, that I say only that which you've given me to say. Consecrate my eyes and my ears and make them holy, that I may hear and see in the Spirit. Bless this food that we're about to receive. And it will be spiritual strength to our bodies, our minds, and souls. Continue doing your will. Sit the Lord by the presence and say, Help me to preach. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If I could tag this conversation today, I'd like to talk from the subject, uh, I'm covered. Mm. I'm covered. And if I had to, you know, sometimes I like to use a subtopic, take your neighbor, neighbor. Yeah. You can't touch this. Yeah. You can't touch this. Psalm 64 is a seem, seemingly a uh, gloomy psalm. I have a few questions this morning. Have you ever felt like you were under attack? Yeah. Have, you, have you ever felt like your family was just getting attacked time and time again? Have you, have you ever felt like your finances were under attack? Have you ever felt like your faith was under attack? Your job, your own? Uh, let me pull up your street. Has anybody ever felt like your peace was under attack? Your joy was under attack? Uh, that's what we see here happening in Psalm 64. Psalm 64 uh, is, is, presents us several different things. First of all, Psalm 64 is a cry for help, for intervention, or for assistance. Uh, Psalm 64 also shows uh, uh, somebody who's in a mind frame that is struggling to survive in the midst of their enemies. Psalm 64 shows us someone who has, uh, has a desperate need for God's 
intervention. Eh? Psalm 64 shows us a man who's desperate for God to step in and to show himself mighty in his situation. Uh, we can really say that Psalm 64 is a 911 call to God saying, Lord, there's an emergency and I need your help. But don't that song sound a little bit like many of the chapters in our lives today? That many of us have had a Psalm 64 experience where we didn't call nobody else but God because we needed some help and we needed some help right then. Yeah, Psalm 64. David understood that, that, that in order for me to get through what I'm going through, in order for me to come out on top of the situation, David understood I don't need no money, I don't need no house, I don't need no material things. What I need right now is God's protection. Uh, yeah, can I, can I be honest with you? That there will be some storms that you will not be able to speak to in your life. There'll be some rain that you don't want to dance in. There'll be some struggles that you can't push yourself through. There'll be some hurt that you can't pray away. There'll be some battles that you can't sing your way out of. There'll be some issues that money cannot buy you out of. There's going to come a time or two in your life where you're going to be faced with some circumstances and some situations. And the only person you can call for help is I can't call mom and daddy. I know they mean the best. I can't call sister and brother. I know they'll help me out. But listen, if I'm going to get through this situation, i got to call on God because he's the only one that can offer me sure proof protection. David opens up this song by getting God's attention. Somebody say your neighbor, get God's attention. Get, God, get God's attention. He opens this up by getting God's attention. He says to God, listen up. I got a problem. I, I got a situation right here. I, I, I done got myself in a mess. I, I, I got something. I'm in something right now. And I need your attention. Can we be honest and be like David that sometimes we find ourselves in some mess that we got our own self in? Yes. Can we be honest like David and declare some of the trouble that I'm experiencing is because I put myself in that trouble? Can, can, can we be honest that some of the circumstances that we find ourselves in is because we put ourselves Things. He said, 
protect my life. Not, not my money, not my house, not my car, not my prestige. He says, protect my life. He understood that life was more important than the little things that he had accomplished in life. Oh yeah, I'm about to help somebody uh, because we got we know some people right now. I hope ain't nobody in the room, but if so, I'm glad you're here. We got some folks too busy trying to protect their money and they still miserable. <laughs> don't talk that to me now. We got folks trying to, put, to protect their possessions and they still don't have peace over the little bit that they got. Yes, you got people trying to protect their status and their prestige in the community and in the church. Lord, they just make up the rules, Lord. They just 
wake up me. You understand? Being used by the devil. And just all, just always a negative mess. Just being used by the devil. Uh, that's why it's important, sister brothers, uh, that we continue to ask God for discernment. Somebody say discernment. Because if, I, if, if, if some of our discernment was keen, we wouldn't be in some of the messes we in right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so. I'm just throwing this in the pot for free. Be careful of your connections in this season. Be, 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 be. Think it not strange. Certain people start popping up again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have to ask yourself, where you come from? <laughs> Obviously, you know they would not be sitting there by God. Right, right, right. Oh, okay, some, some of y'all right now, right. you feel like you're laughing because somebody popped up in your life this past week. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be careful. Let me be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've said this thing over and over again, over and over again. I've said the word that folk will kill people more with that pink tornado than they feel with their hands. <laughs> The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, it says that life and death are in the power of the what? Tongue. So that means, that means that he, not only, as David said, protect me from my life, he said, I need you to hide me from their plots, but I also need you to hide me from their mouths. Yeah. Uh, the super the master said, I have to learn, some folk need to watch their mouth. Some, some people better be careful of what they say to you and about you. And listen, this is one of the lessons that my grandmother taught me. Folk is going to treat you how you allow them to treat you. Folk are going to talk to you how you allow them to talk to you. You better be careful of how you let people speak to you in this season. You better be careful of how you allow them to deal with you in this season. What did Cardi B say? She said, you better be careful with me. You better be careful with me because I belong to God. And if you touch me the wrong way, his scripture says, touch not my anointing. You better be careful. Say that, say that. Because I'm caught. Because uh, the truth of the matter is, some stuff you don't need to comment on anyway. That's right, that's right. I heard my grandmother say one time, and I'm pretty sure you've heard this, you can't be the pot trying to call. Get him back. Okay. All right. And because the truth of the matter is, some of the stuff that we put our mouths on, it ain't your business no way. Uh, but I'm going to keep on moving. David says, there are words <laughs> of my and an arrow punctures as it's created to do damage going in and coming out. That's why you got to be careful of what we say. And we got to ask God for protection from the arrows that other people are shouting towards us. Can I testify right here for a moment? I used to be hurt and it, it bothered me. Sometimes it crushed my feelings when I heard some of the things that were being said behind closed doors. Yeah, yeah, maybe you ain't got a real story like that, but I got one today. Yeah, I, I drove many days from the Stewart Tabernacle Church in Fresno, California, back to my hotel room. I drove many days from Smithfield Church Road in Sharon back to Charlotte with tears down my eyes because of the arrows uh, that people had thrown at me with their mouth. Uh, oh, but one day as I was driving and I wanted to complain, Lindell, God had to remind me uh, that if they don't talk about you, uh, that So God had to remind you they're going to talk, but I still need you to keep going. They're going to have their opinion, but I still need you to keep going. And I came to tell somebody today, it does not matter what's coming out of their mouth. you got to keep on going because God's got you caught. Yes. My mama said, folks are going to talk whether you're doing something good or bad. But my God daddy, I love his advice. He said, boy, let folk run their mouths and you run your business. And yeah, some of y'all need to get quick getting mad at what people say. Let them say what they gotta say. You start running your business. Huh? You show them what it looks like to be a success. Huh? You show them what it looks like for God to pick you up out of nothing huh? and set you on a place called grace. Huh? You show them what it looks like that God can pull them out of addiction huh? and save your soul. You show them better than you can tell them. My, my. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, run your Run your business. Let them run their mouths, but you run your business. Yes. I came to encourage somebody today to tell them, let them run their mouths, but I need you to keep on praising. Let them run their mouths, I need you to keep on worshiping. Let them run their mouths, I need you to 
to keep on singing, keep on shouting, keep on building, keep on trying to become better. Because when you look back over your life and you'll see where God brought you from, you'll be able to say, thank you for every word that you said against me. Thank you for every time you put a knife in my Thank you for every trap you set. Because of every trap you set for me, God allowed me to jump right over. Oh! 
Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, he may have knocked me down a few times, uh, but I'm still here. And the reason why, the reason why, the reason why I'm still standing is because God has me come. You may not believe me, but there are some people that are trying to figure out how you made it out of the problems that you were dealing with because they act like they knew all your business. There's some people right now trying to figure out how is it that you keep bouncing back up. There's some people trying to figure out right now how is it that you keep on going. And the only answer that will satisfy them is that God's grace has you covered in your bulletproof. So it does not matter what happens to you. God I have to come. I'm closing here. I'm closing here. But I remember. I remember. I think it was in Christmas of 1996. Christmas 1996. It was a very, very, very good Christmas for me uh, because I got everything on my list. <laughs> that rarely happens in a single pair of home, but I got everything that was on my list. And, 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 and I wanted. Uh, I, I wanted one of these ugly little clouds. <laughs> I wanted an ugly cloud. Mother didn't know why I wanted it, but I liked it. And, and, and the clown, you would seal it up with air. Yo, you know what I'm talking about? And, 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 and it had a little smile on his face. And you would, I thought I was going to be the next Muhammad, you know. I, I would, I'm closing, I'm, I would hit the clown. And it would bounce back up. I would, I would hit the clown again, and it would, it would just bounce back up. Then I would pin it down on the ground, and I would. And as soon as I got up, it bounced back up. I said, "Wait a minute here." So, so this time I wrestled it to the ground, and I beat it up some more. And this time.
Thank you, Father. I want you to go Thank you, Father. And ponder on that scripture tonight. Yes. Yes. Ponder on that scripture this week. Mm. It says all these nasty things that the enemy may try to do. Take it in and keep reading. Keep reading. Tell somebody else, keep reading. Keep reading. Because if you keep reading, it tells me what the enemy may try to do. But it gives me assurance of what God will do. My mom. My, my. <laughs> yes, thank you. That they came to their own demise by their own mouth. <laughs> the same mouth you use to try to kill me is going to be what hurts you. Oh, God, help me. God, help me. And can I tell you, it don't take God long to do what he needs to do. But you got to trust him. And as I said to the family yesterday, you got to first belong to him. That part. That part right there. That's no good for you to drive a car and know you can pay for the insurance, but you won't get it. Then you get in an accident. I should have got some insurance. God don't want no shit to do this. This is what I love about him, though. He already paid the price. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Who wouldn't want a lifetime warranty of full coverage insurance? <laughs> With benefits. Today, I just want to pray together. Yes, Lord. We all are under attack. Yes, yes Jesus. Mm -hmm. Everything's going all right. Jesus. But you don't see what's around the corner. Mama.
I'll open up the windows of heaven. And I'll pour out more blessings. Watch this. Then you have room to receive. Can you imagine what that looks like? That means, let me tell you what it looks like. You could be thinking about something and boot there you go. But you gotta be in his will. You have to be in his will. Does that mean I have to be perfect? No. We'll, we'll never be perfect, but we have to be striving for perfection. I'm here today to pray. And I just want to pray. That's I've been feeling that all week. Just to pray. Because many of us are under attack. If I'm talking to you, you something I've said registers with you. I want you to make your way to this altar right quick. We just want to pray together. I want you to yes. come. Don't think twice about it. Don't you allow the enemy to try to talk you out of coming. I need you to come right now. Come right now.
people's shoulders around this altar. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, release us by your authority. We give every problem, every situation, every circumstance, we give it to you right now in Jesus' name. And we lay it at your feet and we simply ask you to do what you do best. And that is to have your way. God, we pray for families right now that are around this altar. Say that the Lord rebuke you and the hand of God is against you. We command you to take your hands off of our families. We command you to take your hands off of our finances. We command you to take your hands off of our faith. We command you to take your hands off of our children. We command you to take your hands off of our loved ones in the name of Jesus. And we cover them now by the authority of the blood. We cover them now through the precious Jesus. 